pre-production iPhone 12 allegedly handled on video. It's got all the pieces. It's got all the makings. You hear that? You see that headline? It's got all the makings mm. of something you would be paying attention to in the tech universe. This story via GSM Arena, but this was floating around. This is a story that was floating around. Oh. And lots of speculation around this video. You scroll down a little bit, you'll see it's your typical handle it handled phone leak video 15 seconds long we see the flat edge we see a box we see the back of the unit looking very iphone 11 triple camera setup little unlock on the front there uh i don't know no no i don't know i don't know if i buy it or not it's look there's no FCC label on the back of the device, though pre-production units, that might not be an issue. Is there music in this video? It's muted on the uh, stream. But there was actually some rap music in that video? Is there? Seems like an odd... It seems like an odd... Uh, or what, you know... Like It seems like an odd pairing, but okay, all yeah. right. The camera layout on the back is identical to the iPhone 11 Pro which doesn't match up with some of the renders we've seen. However, the renders can be inaccurate if they're based on schematics for case manufacturing. Yeah, okay. I, it looks weird. I, I, I don't know if weird. people have seen this video floating around, but to me it looks weird because it looks so much like an iPhone 11. I start to wonder, did somebody, is it a case? Did somebody build a housing around? Like, doesn't that edge look weird? How it curves and then it's flat? There's like a chamfer, a a barely a barely chamfer, mm -hmm. and then I don't know. Something feels off about it to me. Hmm. Call me crazy, because you'll you'll do well, that anyways. Yeah, but I feel this is not a hands-on video. Maybe it is. I don't know. I would love to. I had the models and the mock-ups in here, and they even with the triple camera unit, like this guy right here. You still had a different kind of flatness around the edge and you obviously you had a different finish on the back as well uh this is just a model who knows what's to completely believe we've renders models now we have this unboxing video they show you the box in the background to make it seem more real but to me that could actually be an indication that they're really trying to sell it to you mm. and this video came out on billy billy famous very popular video site in china I don't know if it's to be believed or not. For some reason as well, the notch section is like blurred out a little bit towards the end. Or no, am I crazy there as well? There's some... Oh, it's just a it's sticker. The, the wrap. Yeah, there's just a wrap Do on they, it. They don't usually have bubbles on the... Mmm! Willie do. That's I'm just curious. That guy is Willie do right there. You guys are wondering. I'm tuned in. I came here to see Willie do. That's Willie do right there. I peaked. You don't miss him. Yeah. Because if you blink, you might miss him. That's the speed and the pace that he likes to move at Can when he throws it. To this? <laughs> when he throws it in there about the bubbles. No, I agree with you. There, of course, somebody could say, well, it's a pro, you know, it's a prototype. They've got a different I protocol see. for how they treat it. But I, man, I hear you. I'm skeptical. But nonetheless, it is sort of in the, it's in the, the vicinity of w what we expect that next iPhone to look like. But, Hey, man, if you're going to get hot on Billy Billy, you're going to pull views on Billy Billy, then maybe you uh, goof around a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm okay with saying I don't know. I'm just saying if you catch this video, take it with a grain of salt. That's about all there is for that. Now, talk. Now, talk. Now, I got something else that it, it is not a grain of salt to be taken with it. With it. You will not need any salt to go with this. Okay. And that is this guy right here. That, ladies and gentlemen... It's already seasoned. It's already uh, spicy enough. The A5 Wagyu? Yeah, yeah, you don't need no salt. Yeah. On that, that is the new Z Fold 2 Galaxy Samsung. I put those words in a different order to make yeah, you yeah. rethink it. In the Mystic Bronze, I was goofing. I was playing around, Will. Shot the Unbox Therapy video. In fact, it's uploading right now as we speak. Imagine that, multitasking. 
right over here it's uploading i'm chatting yeah lou later unbox therapy working together cooperation you've heard it before mm -hmm. this is the mystic bronze they fixed the hinge solid hinge stopping at any range with the brush on the inside why don't you play a little bit of that clip that's from Samsung while our video is uploading, the unboxing video, which you're definitely going to go watch after you're done watching this Lou Later episode. Yeah, I, I would. You'll go check it out. Yeah. Willie Do's not biased or anything. And look at this product video. They go in. The hinge is completely redone. It was the most striking thing for me interacting with this device, the Z Fold 2, how different the open and close feels with the brushes and the solidness of the hinge. It'll freeze at any point. Mm. The feeling of quality in there and an improvement. Now, I'm not saying this thing you want to throw it off a cliff. Mm. I'm not saying this is a solid slab like a slab is. Cold, cold stone. Stone cold? Cold stone. Ice no. cream. Stone cold Steve Austin. Oh, the stunner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ice cream on the slab. You had to follow along, okay, Will. We're, we're going back to that. Yeah, you had to follow along. So I was impressed because I had the old one there on the table as well. It's upstairs right now, but I'm opening and I'm closing mm. to feel. And that one had a little, a little grittiness to it, which at the time I was okay with because I was bending screens mm -hmm. a year ago. I was bending screens, mm -hmm. which got me going as it would, as it should if you were in this business. How about that for a notification sound? And, but it was obviously first generation. There were some issues. And they go back to the drawing board, and you appreciate when Samsung goes back to the drawing board. They put the people in the boardroom. Uh -huh. You understand? They put on the suits. They put on the outfits. Yeah. They, they put on they the, do. what's his name? Tom. Tom Brown. Yeah, they put on the Tom Brown. And they got the suit jacket, but with the, with the dress shorts and the dress shoes. Let's go see if Tom Brown here. Yeah, Tom Brown, because they had the special edition, there so they must have had a meeting. They you must have had a meeting. Like yeah, they went like that to the boardroom and they redid it. And they were all stand they were all sitting there like that. And they said, you know what? Here's how you do a hinge. Mm. Here's how you improve a hinge. That's how the conversation went down. Mm. And now you got a hinge, Will. You stop it at any point. You want to stop it. Because I don't know where you want to stop your hinge. And then of course, let's not forget, oh, you fixed the outside. Biggest deal. Because you gotta be able to use the phone like that. And that was the advantage that the Huawei Mate X had, even though that device, you know, mm. you don't see that thing kicking around too many places. Mm -mm. And they had the reverse thing going on, a lot of durability questions. They kept the same design, which gives me fewer durability concerns, but I'm still gonna have my durability concerns. But then they give me the big display on the outside so I can do the quick things I need to do, straight out the pocket without the opening. Because the old fold, with the small front screen, I was opening yes. all the time. Yeah. All right? You see, I look at my, look, I'm looking at the frame up there to make sure I've got it framed up. And it looks cleaner, too. You see you that? You don't have the camera little uh, ledge there. Amazing point you just made. That's right. It's Infinity the Infinity o. o style, the tiny little camera hole punch. I don't want to give away the whole Unbox Therapy video, but it's in the house, and that video is uploading at the moment. Now, of course, if you head to the next article we're going to be talking about here, this brings into question, this is where your brain goes, my brain goes, this is where everybody's brain's going to go. Mm. Because this is back to back now. We just had this thing making the rounds. We couldn't show it turned on. I feel it vibrating because it is turned on. You see, I can turn it on, I can test it out and use it, but I can't show the world yet. And this is the comparison you want to think about. It's two different approaches to a similar kind of concept, the future computing device. What is a phone? Are these phones... I don't know if I can say this or not, but I got uh, Panos coming on for the interview. Oh, well, you just did. Oh, I just so. gave it away, so it doesn't matter. But yeah. I got him coming on for the interview, assuming all goes well. And I got to ask him, and I will ask him when he comes on the show, is this a phone? Mm -hmm. What is a phone? I'll ask him that because it's a yes. fun, we're going to have a fun yeah. uh, little dialogue. We'll do some tap dancing mm -hmm. as you would. Mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, what is a phone when you're looking at these devices? Obviously, the primary use of these things is multitasking, um, media consumption, messaging, video conferencing. Look at the world we're living in.
very different approaches to sort of similar concepts now that we have a Microsoft product with Android. We got to start thinking about it. This one flips all the way around. This one gives you the big display on the inside. This one will only ever give you two displays. Mm -hmm. This one, when it's closed off, it's so minimal. You just put it away. You just tap it and put it away. Mm -hmm. This one out the pocket's going to be quicker, though because you're already on the screen. Yes. It's a lot to consider. Yeah. So we have a comparison here from PC Mag, and they go through a few different categories of how you might want to compare these things. I think the first one people are going to consider is the price. When you're looking at the Surface Duo, in my right hand here, you're looking at $1399. When you're looking at the new Z Fold 2, you're looking at $1999. That's a big gap straight out the gate. Now, not exactly one-to-one -one on the specs, to be clear, to be fair. Here we're looking at some top tier Snapdragon 865. We're looking at the previous generation on the Surface product. So this isn't gonna be your spec champ. This one will. Same thing with the cameras. I mean, we know what Samsung was doing with the cameras. This is a large camera module, triple camera setup. Here we have the one camera on the inside of the device, which a lot of people are skeptical about. Look, I can't show you yet, but it's in there and it's a different approach and it's a little bit of an extra. But how much of a focus can it be? And right. where is Microsoft's history in this particular area? Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Um, you know, first, what's your take on the first iteration of products? Are you invested in them? Like, would you get them personally? Or would you wait for the second generation? Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's fun to be an early adopter. Mm. You got people walking by the desk here. You got even guys like Vin, who's normally only excited about the pizza slice he brings. Mm. But he comes over here and all of a sudden he's weighing in. And yeah, all, I was surprised about Yeah, that. all of a sudden he's weighing in. What's that device you got over there? Yeah. Say, hey man, relax. Yeah. He said, let me get my hands on that. I said, you got the pizza all over the hands. You yeah. can't. This is also in my pocket already. Yeah, I said, I'm using this right now. Yeah. He said, let me get my hands on that. But yeah, it's Just getting, one time. it's interesting because it's new and it gets you thinking and imagining like what, how and what these form factors will be going forward, what these devices will look like. This device to me is very science fiction. It's, it's post phone, post Malone and post phone. Yeah. Because it just, the phone part is secondary. It's okay, fine, I'll, I'll make a phone call, but yeah, I know how to make a phone call, but it's going to be down the list as far as holding it to your head. It'll do it, mm -hmm. but it's down the list. So for me, that one feels more futuristic. It's getting a lot of attention. I think in the street, mm -hmm. people are going to wonder what you're up to. Well, that goes for both of them. This one is high tech because of the application, the actual implementation of folding OLED. I mean, that's some high-tech stuff to fold a display in half. So for different reasons. But this one, when closed, still a phone. Mm -hmm. I am always, as a guy, the way that I operate, going to be most interested when it's most new. And I can't help it. Is that smart? Probably not. Well, not with your hard-earned, not when you're working with your hard-earned dollars over here. I'm not going out there saying, get your two Gs out. Let's go. Mm -hmm. But it's a hard thing to evaluate, to say, what does it mean to you to be on the cutting edge? What does it mean to you to be an early adopter? And what is that worth? That's going to be on a, that's a personal level. Mm -hmm. the, the, the practical side, possibly even the more intelligent side of you is going to say, wait. Wait for the next gen. Mm. But again, that depends how much value you associate with being able to experiment with that new stuff early on and for me that's a tremendous value which is why these channels exist and all this stuff exists mm -hmm. so the displays obviously different app, uh, implementation you have a dual display setup on this one it's always going to be dual this one when you crack it open to the inside you can split the display in software or use it all as one obviously on the z fold 2 the folding thing i will say this one here there's no gap on the on surf the surface duo, duo. Yeah. it just it's a sandwich I mean, they just come together. It's flat the whole way. The hinge really surprises you from a hardware standpoint. I mean, that happens actually on both of the devices, but 
this one still doesn't fully close. It's still a clamshell effect on the Z Fold 2. Uh, the hardware feels robust, more ro robust than the previous version, which I really appreciate. But there's just a different the set of challenges here when you're trying to have a soft, foldable display on the other side of the hinge. I talked about the specs already. The camera will be the other big factor, I think, right? When you have this unit, which is going to perform pretty similar to your other Galaxy flagship devices, it's a huge leg up for somebody who wants this to be their primary camera as well. And then the CPU and RAM, 865 plus on the Z Fold 2, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 storage. That's compared to 855 on the Duo, 6 gigs of RAM. Now, granted, again, it's not a one-to-one -one thing. There are different price point to start with. Mm -hmm. And maybe the target market might even be a little bit different for each of these devices. And then the last piece, Will, is software. This is Microsoft's take on Android. There's things that you can do. Again, I can't show you at the moment, but... Um, Resize, you can see this in their promotional material, resizing things, moving from display to display and setting up pairs. And actually the software that Samsung implements on a Z Fold 2 is, actually, is, is kind of similar to that. In a sense, you set up app pairs left and right or top and bottom, even up to three applications which I'll sh I show off in the unboxing video. You and go both check OSs that. work with Android. It's, a, it's all Android all day. No. This one has, the Microsoft one has more Microsoft stuff out the gate and the Samsung one more, but it's Android. Yes. Do what you want, do what you please. Also because this one is older generation, the connectivity stuff within the chipset for Wi-Fi and all that, it's a little bit more dated as well. Mm. But again, Microsoft first time at, at, in the, at this party specifically. Mm. And so taking their time and I, you know, that's fully appreciated and expected plus $600 difference. So you tell me in the comments right now, if you had to choose knowing what you know, and I realize you have a limited amount of feedback on the duo, but you tell me in the comments what it's going to be for you. If you could have only one of these devices and you had to spend your own, the hard earned cash on it, would you go for the Z Fold 2 from Samsung or would it be the Microsoft Surface Duo? I'm curious. I'm gen what do you think is going to win? Well, in the comment section. Uh, duo. Duo. Wow. Willie Duo. I'm calling it. Willie Duo. Yeah. Also known as Willie Duo. Mm -hmm. Also known as Ming Chi Kuo. Oh. oh. Okay. I'll take that. In the next Ming story. Cool. Yeah. In the next story. It's cool. What did you think I was making? I was trying to make a. What did you think I was doing? <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I was just moving into the next story yeah, here. Yeah, that's a nice segue. Okay, Call you know, I'm just trying to make it smooth over here. Ming Chi. Ming Chi. Uh, he's he's back in the news because he's talking about super fast 5G, which, uh, I mean, you know, not all 5G is created equal. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are curious, okay, what is this 5G story going to be for the upcoming iPhone? Because the, the word on the street is you're going to have some pretty hefty connectivity and that, that would be a, a huge opportunity for Apple in the keynote as well as just in the marketing material to convince people to upgrade. They were There was a suggestion that the 5G would be a big reason for people to be interested in finally upgrading their older iPhones. However, this new report suggests that the type of 5G that's going to show up in most of the next generation iPhones isn't going to be that next level millimeter wave type of 5G that's delivering those ridiculous speeds with the drawbacks that come with it, including range and various other factors, when you're seeing those crazy 5G speed tests, you were just looking at one before we started shooting. Mm -hmm. And I believe it was actually on a Z Fold 2, or was it? I think so, yes. Anyway, you're, you, can, you can find 5G speed tests pulling crazy numbers mm -hmm. over the cellular network while over the... 5G network, obviously. This was the, the test that you were you were showing me here. First 5G speed test on a brand new Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G shot in downtown Hoboken, Hoboken, New Jersey. And look at this thing climb. This is on Verizon, by the way. Now, Verizon does support the millimeter wave 5G. And what are we getting? Like 2,000 megabit almost? 1,700 megabit? Even though, generally speaking, you're going to achieve something closer to 500 megabits. But still, it's bananas. And this millimeter wave technology is exp expensive. 
and difficult to get right now because of lockdown, because of pandemic stuff. And so the original speculation was that maybe Apple could deliver 10 to 20 million units in 2020 featuring this technology. And now that estimate is closer to four to six million. And it's believed that this could be due to the impact of COVID. The global 5G millimeter wave base stations are lower than expected as far as being rolled out. So there may be less of a demand or need to even include this, especially when you consider the expenditure as much as $50 per phone to put this style of 5G into your next generation iPhone. Hmm. So who would this affect? I suppose Verizon customers in the U.S. would be impacted more by this. And depending on the market that you're in, if you can even take advantage of millimeter wave. Mm -hmm. But the uh, the suggestion here is that we're going to see a, a much slower pace, a much slower march towards that technology. It's going to take more time. Yeah. NVIDIA made some news today. You had a little bit of the event on. Uh, we're talking about the new RTX 3000 GPUs. It's crazy because I remember when we were talking about the last generation, it didn't feel that long ago, but it was all the way back in 2018. Yeah, two years ago. It's crazy because you just, ever since then, it's just ray tracing, ray tracing every day. Mm -hmm. every, every day, day you come in, you put your coffee down, you take one look at me, you say ray tracing. Yeah. I say, I hear you, man. That's true. I tell you that I hear you, but it never seems to suffice. So that was two years ago, and they're back now. We had, I can't remember the CEO's name, uh... Do you remember his name? Because he's in the kitchen and he becomes a meme every time and they're making jokes What's on Twitter. His, uh, jacket? And he embraces the meme. Jensen, of course. And he was in the kitchen again, which he's is where you'll... With the jacket. That's where you'll find him. And he also has the leather jacket from time to time and he loves GPUs. And so this, this uh, most recent announcement, he's got the RTX 3070, RTX 3080, and the one that you're excited about, the RTX 3090, 8K capable... GPU and you automatically you immediately started to ask me what what display are we gonna put this on? We got the 8K TVs, but like where are the 8K gaming monitors? What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I'd love to see the 8K, but uh, it, well, first of all, it's gonna take a little time for us to get this. I think it's available what October? September, yeah. September. I think the 3070s in uh, October, but you can get the 3080 and 3090 in September. Well, I'm sure you're working on it. Yeah. I'll get that going. I'm sure you're already working on it. Of course, they wanted to talk about ray tracing. Of course, they uh, announced a relationship with Epic in the news quite a bit these days. And this is the type of news that Epic and Fortnite fans might be more happy to receive. Mm -hmm. At today's launch, the company hit mainstream gamers with the news that Epic Games Fortnite is adding support for RTX, starting with the Marvel character theme Chapter 2 Season 4 release unveiled last week. Ray tracing support will be across four areas. Reflection, shadows, global illumination, and ambient occlusion, which is your favorite, of course. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the good old-fashioned ambient occlusion. Yeah, All great. of which should create a more realistic Toy Story-like effect on the game's cartoon graphics. So I, I'm not a big-time player, but I know the footprint of Fortnite. I know to get this technology out there and adopt it, you got to be on the mainstream titles. And that's what's going on here. They shake hands, they touch elbows, they cut a deal. Mm. And it's like Unreal Engine, Epic, NVIDIA, and Apple, forget about it. Yeah, and AMD, I guess, at this point. Forget about it. Mm. Just for now. Now, they announced a couple of other cool things here, Will, uh, including support for the uh, forthcoming 360 hertz G-Sync eSports displays. Oh. 360 hertz. Yeah. Those displays are going to be coming from Acer, Alienware, a bunch of others. Impressive. And it's going to have all kinds of fancy latency analysis in there, which is going to be capable of measuring the latency from your mouse, you know, so that you know that you're getting that instant feedback. Mm. It's going to do some other stuff too when it comes to uh, broadcasting and game streaming. The NVIDIA broadcast app is going to leverage. AI processing right on the RTX card to do noise redu reduction, virtual green screens, screens, and auto framing activities for when you're doing the game streaming on the Twitch and the oh, so okay. forth. And you can utilize all that, all that power, all that AI in there to, to produce a better stream. 
Uh, what is this? Is this the new cyberpunk? That's the cyberpunk with the uh, ray tracing. That's the cyberpunk with the ray tracing. Very is there? Cool. I want to know if there's ambient occlusion. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah, you yeah yeah yeah. You're damn right there is. Enhanced man, it looks really cool. So I'll be playing that. I don't know about 8K, but I'll be playing that on some RTX stuff. The next next generation. Now these aren't going to be cheap. But I, it depends on how you evaluate. I mean, performance, price to performance might be better than the previous version. You have uh, improvements as well in power consumption, I believe. So anyways, the 3070 is the entry. That'll be available in October, as Will suggested. $499 for that. RTX 3080, 700 bucks September 17th. And the massive RTX 3090, 1500 bucks September 24th. So that's what Will was talking about. Hopefully we can get our hands on this and actually uh, feast our eyes, feast our eyeballs 8K. on ray tracing on the latest stuff. They keep working on it. Shout out. Walmart Plus is here to take on Amazon Prime. That's Are you ready for this, Will? Really big ad there. Do you have Amazon Prime? I don't know. You don't. You're not an Amazon Prime guy. Well, a lot Should of people I? do. This kind of shocked me, actually. I was looking at this, and it says here that there's 150 million Amazon Prime subscribers. In the U.S.? In the world. In the world. Yeah, in the U.S. would be insane. Let me just make sure I have that number right, because it did blow me away. Un did I just say 150 million? <laughs> did you? It's actually 150,000. No, I'm just kidding. Where is it? Yeah, 150 me million members worldwide. Wow. It's unbelievable. Because once you got the Prime, Will, you're just shopping more. You're, it, it, they've, they've done the studies. Once you've got the Prime, you're shopping more. Because it's just easier. you get Prime Video as well? Or you not? get it all. Yeah. The whole you're thing. Prime. You get the best the treatment. All of a sudden, you get the faster delivery. It's included for free. Mm. You got the content to go with it. And, of course, they continue to move into the food and groceries and forget about it. But Walmart's not happy about it. They're sitting there saying... Hey, man, we can deliver stuff. Yeah. We have stores. Stuff is close by. We can get it to your door. Forget about Bezos. Mm -hmm. We got blue bags with a friendly W. And all we have to do is put a plus logo because plus is very 2020. We just call it plus. It's not Disney plus. It's Walmart plus because you love Walmart. And you know what else we're going to do for you, Will? We're not just going to bring things to your home possibly on the same day because you're a Walmart Plus subscriber. We're also going to give you a deal on gasoline. Oh. Yeah, that's right. You come fill up your tank at the local Walmart gas station. We're going to cut you a deal as a Plus subscriber. You know what else we're going to do for you, Will? Huh. When you're in the store, you're going to scan your products on your phone. And when you get to checkout, you just tap your phone. Mm. It's all done for you. Man, I'm so glad I didn't sign up to Amazon Prime. That's right. Walmart's been waiting for you. So they're here to take on the new technology is called scan and go. Who knows how it's going to work? They're also going to let you save a few bucks. 98 bucks a year for Walmart Plus. Amazon Prime, on the other hand, is a few dollars more than that. I think it's 119 mm -hmm. So you get a little advantage because Amazon is so far ahead. Walmart is calling this the ultimate life hack. They're saying get your time back. Spend your time with your family. Don't be in here shopping around. Mm. We'll bring it to your door. Same day. No problemo. You're going to save five cents per gallon on gas, by the way, in case you were curious what the actual saving might be. They did a study here and found that Walmart's best customers are already Amazon Prime members. So that's a problem for Walmart. And what they really want to do is get those people to change over mm. and assume, I mean, that's their major competitor and they don't have a play in this space. And uh, they got to do something. So this is their shot at it. I don't know how well, it, the, how, how, how seamless the experience will be. I wouldn't want to be competing with Amazon. Mm. Everything is very, very smooth sailing mm. when, you, when you buy something on Amazon mm -hmm. or when you subscribe to Prime. Mm -hmm. Walmart's got their work cut out for them, but they're in it. They're in the game. They got the blue bag and they got the nice looking W. And this is what you were telling me earlier, how you feel like Newegg looks like Amazon now. Oh, this is not uh, Amazon right here? Yeah. No? Willie do. <laughs> Getting his little part in there. Go on a product page, and then it looks oh, sort geez, of even more man. even more like Amazon. But I I, I, I wouldn't so do it. I wouldn't do any different, man. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, Amazon does it right. It works, right? So speaking of Amazon, they got the approval to do the drone package delivery, which I know you've been waiting for, Will. Hmm. They just come with the drone, five, six pound package. It drops at the door. They showed this off way back. In fact, yeah. Bezos thought in 2013 that he'd be ready to do this in 20, uh, 2018, only five years later. Well, let me tell you something, it's 2020. Hmm. Guess what? The drones ain't buzzing yet. However... They just got the approval to actually do it. The Federal Aviation Administration said on Monday, it granted Amazon approval to deliver packages by drones. Now, Amazon comes out and says, well, this is just an approval. It's going to take us time. Still give us a break. Stop looking for these drones. Stop calling my house. Stop showing up out front with the guillotine. All right, I'm trying to get these drones sorted out. Yeah, don't do that. (laughs) It'll be a self-piloted drone, fully electric, It'll be capable of carrying five pounds of goods designed to deliver items in 30 minutes by dropping them in a backyard. Isn't that incredible? So they're not on target with the timing, but it looks like it might actually happen, that, 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 that old clip where the drone is coming. And You ready for that type of traffic in the air? Yeah, I would like to see it. But then at one point, uh, it's going to get, get pretty dangerous. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're a peaceful guy, Will. You got all these little guys buzzing around. You're trying to you're, you're trying to live a tranquil life. Yeah. You're trying to you listen outdoors, as the breeze moves through the foliage. Mm. That's you. That, yeah. And then you got zzzz, and mm. Bezos all around you. So is this uh, only in the states right now? Well, yeah, that's like the a- that's the uh, the Federal Aviation Administration in the states FAA. Huh. Uh, they would have to obviously apply for a similar thing. However, if it works there, you have to presume elsewhere in the world they may get similar approvals. Uh, also, to, to fully round it out, they're not the only ones. UPS and a company owned by Google both won approvals last year from the FAA. So it's going to be competition as well. Mm. It's not just going to be Amazon up there. You let one do it, you're going to have a couple doing it. So the drones are coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, another... Amazon related thing, Whole Foods. They're trying out a dark store. What do you think about a dark store? I don't know what it is, but uh, let's hear, I like the sound of it. Yeah, let's hear I, from I, Willie Do. Know. He's just going to go out on a limb and speculate right oh, now. Boy. Um, what is a dark store? Whole Foods going to try out a dark store. I was thinking maybe something after hours. No, the lights are just turned off. <laughs> just physically like <laughs> <laughs> just for energy savings like no yeah. no 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 keep going no. keep okay. going will let's hear it you Dark sound you make it sound store. like a party or something at the whole foods you're just hanging out after hours i don't know i guess based with like covid mm, mean, mm, there's mm. just so many people mm. maybe it's like a a smaller store but they can shop there i i don't know i don't know a dark store <laughs> Come on now. What kind of... uh, Is there a hint? Give me a hint. No, there's no hint. This dark store is not a store for you at all, Will. It's a store that will never have customers. It's a store that looks like a store on the inside. However, the shoppers would be Whole Foods or Amazon employees who would shop for you, essentially, and then you would do... And then then it would be the delivery. So they would set up a Whole Foods, This in this case in Brooklyn, and apparently, by the way, the plan was already there prior to COVID to do this. And what's amazing, if you scroll down, it looks like a regular store. It's kind of weird to think about uh, a little bit further. Look at that. You know, no customers will ever be in there. The employees at a store will march up and down. It's so perfectly and well organized. They'll put together your order. And it'll be on its way to your place either by delivery or by bicycle. So it's like a distribution center. But arranged like a store. I see. Right, because what's weird about food is a typical warehouse environment might not be optimal for the people that are picking it. It might be terrible, in fact. Cardboard boxes and everything else. Mm. Shopping is pretty efficient if everything's organized well. Mm. In the aisles, you got to go to the one section, to the frozen food, you got to go to the... So if you make the aisles a little wider and you don't have those pesky customers walking about, you go to the snack aisle, you could probably fill out an order pretty quick. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
So this is, a, again, it's, it's a very timely thing, as you mentioned, with the COVID and the whatnot. And the whatnot. this is, and the whatnot. It's not typical for a Whole Foods, because a Whole Foods, you, you normally have the hot food and the uh -huh. table, and it's an experience. Uh -huh. But people aren't having these experiences in the same way they used to. Now it's efficiency and delivery in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. And you see it, these people, they have their picking lists on uh, smartphones and they go around the aisles. They put it in a cart. They do, they do the shopping in a way that you would do the shopping. Mm. Just like this. The Just, yeah. Perfect pose. I mean, she's got like, the shopping cart. That's exactly how you would look, Just Will. Just leaning on top of the shopping cart there. In the grocery store. That's exactly what you would do. Now, Amazon is taking a couple of different approaches. So this is one way with the Whole Foods dark store. But we talked on the last episode about them also launching their fresh supermarket in California in which you would still be in there, but you would have a lot less interaction because you'd be doing all the new tech ways of, mm. of, of shopping, using your phone to keep track and all the rest of it, just like Walmart was announcing with Walmart Plus. So, so many new ways, Will, to buy things. Yes. And to live in the environment of 2020. Yeah. Tesla released a time lapse of its Gigafactory Shanghai. And you know me, I'm a sucker for a good high tech time lapse, mm. especially in an automotive manufacturing facility where things are getting made by robotic arms. You don't think you got my attention? Mm. So you got a little video down here showcasing some Model 3 production. It all looks very high tech. Now, apparently, this is still not all the way to Elon Musk's eventual. Auto, fully automated vision, but this is pretty impressive watching these things roll yeah. off the line at the pace that they're rolling here. I I like this. You're into this as well. The, the whole systems Incredible. working all together in unison. It's awesome. So I think at one moment there in the video, you actually had a pretty serious number of robots working on one vehicle at a time. You uh, The output... Oh, yeah, I it's I mean the robots are passing the parts to the other robots. Right. I like that. Anyway, of course the video is designed in such a fashion to make it look like they're moving 100,000 units a day. It's not to that degree. The uh, annual production capacity was 200,000 vehicles at Gigafactory Shanghai. That was the number last quarter. Mm. It's a ramp up from the previous numbers, but it, it is still only about 4,000 vehicles per week. Mm. So this makes it look like 4,000 vehicles a minute. Bang, bang, bang. Either way, super cool. Elon has some pretty uh, high ambition here for to, to, to continue to automate this process even more so and, and to continue to find efficiencies. I believe he has referenced the eventual the eventual assembly as the uh, alien dreadnought is what it eventually should look like, Will. Appropriate. At some point, when they've uh, finally reached that massive high-speed output of vehicles. Peak Tesla? Of course, they're going to learn something. Every time they do one of these projects and, and build one of these plants and set up these new lines, and uh, maybe now the, the new frontier is in Texas with the Austin plant that they're working on for the Cybertruck, they can take whatever they got out of the Gigafactory in Shanghai. They got the thing going on in Berlin and mm -hmm. keep finding those efficiencies. Uh, maybe you want to go old school, though, Well, in which case you can check out the new Rolls-Royce Ghost, mm. which is apparently no longer a superficial expression of wealth. Mm. <laughs> so it's affordable? No, not at all. Oh. They just said that this is this is like their minimalist approach. Nothing too over the top. Although, if you click through the images, I think you'll see that you still got the the little tiny lights on the headliner and a Rolls Royce logo that jumps out and a pretty large grill on the front. And I think people are probably uh, going to recognize that you're wealthy if you drive this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you're going to get around that. And if you drive this, you will have to be wealthy because the price is like, 300 grand oh. there's 20 leds that light up the grill as well <laughs> and it's wider than the previous generation i mean there's little wooden trays in the back it's very luxurious oh yeah as you know but believe it or not it's not their most luxurious actually this is one of their more fun to drive models featuring 
four wheel drive and a twin turbo V12 delivering 563 wow. horsepower. It can do cool. zero to 62 in 4.8 seconds, which is impressive because it weighs 2.5 tons. So it's a heavy luxury car that can still move a little bit. And so what do you say, Will? Is this uh, on your radar or what? Daily driver? Yeah, is that yeah, on your radar it. or what? This this is awesome. That's but great. You're probably you're probably still more interested in the Model 3 coming off the assembly line at Gigafactory Shanghai. Yeah, I would take one of those. Okay. Two. All right. You take one of each, maybe. Uh one of the largest internet outages ever of all time recorded, and it occurred this weekend. It led to a 3.5% drop in global internet traffic. And I'm pretty sure that you were responsible. Me? Yeah, that's right. Oh. Uh. I want to know what you were up to this weekend. <laughs> I mean, I, I was at the cottage. I, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Sure, bud. That's not me. Sure, bud. Yeah. And let me tell you why, because I'm reading through this article, right? Century Link, Century Link is the company. The, the outage led to the big drop. The uh, there was a misconfiguration in one of its data centers. Century Link. And the U.S. internet service provider suffered a major technical outage that spread across the internet, taking down many popular sites and services on Sunday. It led to problems for many other companies, including Amazon, Twitter, Namecheap, OpenDNS, Reddit, Discord, Hulu, Steam, and others. Hmm. It's like a domino effect. One breaks down. One problem leads to another. Mm. Things are built on top of things. CenturyLink. Because of this outage, because this outage appeared to take all of the CenturyLink Level 3 network offline, individuals who are CenturyLink customers would not have been able to reach Cloudflare or any other internet provider until the issue was resolved. Globally, we saw a 3.5% drop in global traffic during the outage, nearly all of which was due to a nearly complete outage of CenturyLink's ISP service across the United States. Now, let me tell you why it is that you were responsible because you scroll down a little bit more and you say, based on the information from CenturyLink status page, it appears the issue originated in the ISP's CA3 data center in Mississauga, oh. <laughs> located in Canada's Ontario when I province. Was at the cottage. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I read this article. That's so specific. I, I know. I read what? this article and I was thinking to myself, how could it be Mississauga? Of all the places yeah. that lead to this massive outage in the U.S., how can it be Miss? I mean, of course it can be Mississauga, but Willie Doo's hometown, just yeah. chilling on the couch. Oh, on a, not even a CenturyLink customer, but I don't know something you did. Well, oh, I must have uh, stepped on the wrong cable. Yeah, you something. did. That's right. You 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 tripped. You tripped over the wrong cable. Yeah. Is or what Otis happened. Chewed on it or something. Oh, <laughs> chewed yeah. on it. Anyway, massive outage. It got me thinking about how. Just how, how how important our connectivity is and how weird it is to think about a 3.5% drop in internet activity, mm. global internet traffic. And what if that was 30% or something higher? And I think it just got me thinking, I understand there's plenty of contingency and stuff in there, but when you see this domino effect, almost like a power outage, yeah. one kind of yeah. little screw up leads to bigger screw, you know? How long was it out for? That's a good question. Like maybe a couple seconds? It's a great minute? question, Will. It, doesn't say it actually doesn't say in this particular article. But I would assume it would have to be more than a couple of seconds in order to justify this article on Tech Radar Pro. Mm. Never never mind techradar.com, Tech Radar Pro. Mm. IT insights for business. So that means it would have been a serious outage for a while. Yeah. Anyway, shout out Willie Do, shout out Mississauga. Last one for me. New Yorkers are fleeing for Florida and Texas as mobility surges. You know, we like to cover this. This is really interesting to me. People moving around because of things that have happened with COVID. People evacuating the cities. Yeah. So I was futuristic. Reading, I was reading up on the weekend of uh, U-Haul in New York. That's right. just completely flooded with people. That's in this article here. And like actually, it. they use U-Haul to figure out the actual mobility, how many people are moving. Right. And because U-Haul goes to one city and then someone else drives it back, mm. you could check the U-Haul rates to know where the vehicles are needed versus where they're going more frequently, Right. where these people are moving to. So let's say 
people were driving U-Hauls from New York to Florida. You have too many U-Hauls left in Florida. Mm -hmm. And the price to go from Florida to New York in a U-Haul will be one third the price mm -hmm. of the price to go from New York. You see what I'm saying? Yep, yep. Based on availability. So I actually use that. People are moving to places like Vermont, Idaho, Oregon, and South Carolina. And this is not just U-Haul. United Van Lines, their data is in here as well. There's a number of moving companies. The reverse was true for New York and New Jersey, which saw residents moving to Florida, Texas, and other Sun Belt states. Prior to this, relocations had actually reached an all-time low, but now, for obviously a variety of reasons, people are much more interested in moving. One in five Americans relocated or know someone who has during the pandemic. Do-it-yourself moves have increased considerably and consistently over the summer months. Here's the U-Haul piece as well. About a quarter of 2,000 real estate agents surveyed in late June said some home buyers had altered the location of where they were looking to purchase because of COVID. The number of people looking to move from New York City during a pandemic doubled from a year earlier in the San Francisco Bay Area, 31%. So there's a nice little chart down here. New Jersey and New York hit the hardest, but everywhere there's big cities, essentially, because Illinois, Connecticut, California's on the list. They're losing people. A lot more outbound traffic than inbound. And then you look at the list of states that people are moving to, presumably get a little bit more space. The inbound states, Vermont leads the way, Idaho, Oregon, some that I mentioned, Arizona, Tennessee. Also, likely more affordable places to be as the workforce continues to change and the idea of commuting into a city the appeal of being in the city changed substantially as the new restrictions sort of dictate how your life looks. Mm. Cities are always going to have some sort of special appeal, history. Eventually, special events will come back. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, as people are trapped indoors doing these, you know, their usual tasks and working their new online jobs, their remote jobs, I think people are starting to wonder, why am I here specifically? Mm -hmm. Why am I in this small little apartments pay, paying this much money? I could go to Texas or Florida or whatever else it happens to be. And now we have some pretty decent uh, evidence here that that's actually what's happening. This is the, the hypothetical move part I was talking about with U-Haul. To go from New York City to Vermont in a U-Haul is $773. To do the reverse trip is 236 oh, wow. So the inflow... It's interesting, Vermont, by the way, a Target place. I don't know if you've ever been to Vermont. Mm -hmm. What did you do? You were going snowboarding? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So it's a very, it's not New York City. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of nature mm -hmm. and a totally different pace to it. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show you, man, people reevaluating what's valuable yeah. to them. Nature always wins. Nature might win. Yeah. In the long run, nature might win. Yeah. And a guy like Willie Do, you might find him in Vermont. Mm -hmm. You never know.